Welcome to the Wishing You Well podcast. I'm your host, Maria Patrick, and this is your weekly dose of health and wellness ideas and inspiration so that I can help you to live your best, longest, healthiest, and most wonderful life. I'm a health and wellness coach and a Qigong instructor. I am deeply committed to helping people get healthier and stronger. I scour the headlines and latest books every week in search of things to inspire us on our health journey. I'm calling today's podcast, Indulge, Party of One, because I want you to start indulging and you don't need anyone else to help make that happen. I'm inspired by the beautiful actress, author, and Emmy Award-winning Food TV Network host, Valerie Bertinelli. I have been a fan of Valerie since she starred on the show One Day at a Time, which I loved watching as a kid. I have followed her career through the years, and I have found her books very enlightening, particularly the one she released a few years ago called Enough Already, Learning to Love the Way I Am Today, and her latest, which is a cookbook called Indulge, Delicious and Decadent Dishes to Enjoy and Share. If you have ever been frustrated and felt bad about yourself while you were on a weight loss journey, imagine how challenging it would be to go through that with the whole world watching, trolling, and criticizing. Well, that's Valerie's story. And thankfully, she has come out the other side of it stronger and healthier, both physically and emotionally. The theme of her new book is that food is meant to be enjoyed, and that there is simply no way to enjoy a meal, or your life for that matter, if you are consumed with regret and denial. Valerie has spent her entire life dealing with weight issues, and when it came to food, she was plagued with denial, deprivation, guilt, regret, and shame. She admits up front in the first few paragraphs of the book that the word indulge is not typically one that you would associate with health and well-being, and that the words treat and cheat day and guilty pleasure had been banned from her vocabulary forever. Valerie is embarking on a mission to change the way we think, not only about food, but about ourselves as well, so that we can do like she has done and begin to build a healthy relationship with food. I was raised in an Italian family where everything we did revolved around our meals. Many of my childhood memories are connected to the meals we ate, the sights and smells in the kitchen, the recipes which were handed down from generation to generation, and the understanding that every holiday would be celebrated with no fewer than four courses. My sisters and I often heard the words, eat, eat, manja, manja. But regrettably and unfortunately, they were often followed by one of the adults in the room telling us not to eat so much. As a kid, it was hard to understand which command prevailed, the one telling us to keep eating or the one telling us not to do so. We were definitely encouraged to be card-carrying members of the Clean Plate Club, which isn't always the best approach when you are counting calories, watching your waistline, and concerned about your health. Like Valerie, I love food, but I've often been plagued with guilt, regret, and unfortunately and sadly, sometimes even some self-loathing. So for me, Valerie's book Indulge is an express invitation to start enjoying my life and my food more, and I am here today to share that same message with you all. There's a large movement that has been trending recently. You may have heard of it. It's the anti-diet movement. Just put in hashtag anti-diet and so many things will come up. Many influencers have taken up the cause in an attempt to help us all reframe the narrative about body positivity and our relationship with food. Dieting is a multi-billion dollar industry. Think about how many commercials for weight loss you hear after watching just a few minutes of television. And the fashion world has us all brainwashed to believe that we all need to be the same size in order to be accepted. The anti-diet movement 
is to promote body positivity at any size, to create a mentally healthy relationship with food, and to remove fat phobia and stigma from our society. The war on obesity, which is quite prevalent, has led to food anxiety, a bad relationship with food, using exercise as punishment, purging, starving, yo-yo dieting, and more. All of these things can lead to much personal distress, physical, mental, and emotional. What does it mean when we hear the words anti-diet? It's about getting away from extreme calorie restriction. It's about getting away from labeling foods as either good or bad and to stop the shaming, blaming, and punishment that comes with weight gain. The approach of the anti-diet movement is very similar to what Valerie is promoting in her book, which, by the way, is filled with the most decadent and delicious recipes. And they come with Valerie's suggestion that we try to eat more mindfully, intentionally, and intuitively. Intuitive eating means that we get away from the age-old approach of eating certain meals with particular foods at specific times and cleaning every crumb from the plate. But instead, we focus on eating when we're hungry and stopping when we're full. This approach means that our well-being will be front and foremost and the focus on portions, calorie counting, food labels, and body weight will become a thing of the past. What I really enjoyed about getting my health coaching certification is that we learned about using foods as medicine and incorporating foods with particular nutrients and vitamins in order to restore the health of our clients and to help them to maintain it. The teaching was never focused on having our health coaching clients counting calories or living a life of deprivation. Instead, we were strongly encouraged to help our clients to use what they called the crowding out approach. This meant that our clients could continue to enjoy their indulgences, whether it was their daily coffee drink, their favorite afternoon snack, or their after dinner dessert, but that we would help them to fill their plates with more nutrition at every meal, which would in effect crowd out the foods that had less nutritional value. It was an aha moment for me when I realized that balance truly could happen right alongside indulgences and the love of eating food. I'm proud to say that I have successfully worked with many clients on improving their self-acceptance and helping them to discern the difference between thirst and hunger, helping them to realize what their regular cravings may be telling them and how to build an eating plan that will nourish the body while at the same time validating the experience with food. We are plagued by so many negative messages when it comes to dieting, including preoccupation with food and weight and sizes and body image. And then that results in feelings of guilt, shame, loss of control around food. Like Valerie, I've had enough of this and I agree with her. It's time to say goodbye to using exercise, food restriction, fasting, or purging as punishment, and instead adopt the intuitive eating approach patterns, which will lead to better physical, mental, and emotional health. I think it's important for us to remember that even if our current health conditions require us to make certain dietary changes, For instance, if you've been diagnosed with kidney disease or heart disease or diabetes, you can still maintain a positive and non-restrictive mindset around food. It's also time that we start exercising for fun, finding something that you truly enjoy doing that gets you up and moving and eating what you want, when you want, in order for us to build a positive relationship with both food and exercise. The result will be a complete shift in mindset, which will help you to do a lot of things. First, improve your workout retention, your body image, and lastly, your relationship with food. So one way to embrace this mindset shift to indulgence is to get a copy of Valerie's cookbook 
and start to incorporate things into your diet, like her classic eggs benedict, her ham and brie sandwiches, her burrata with grilled peaches, her crispy goat cheese salad, her chicken with tomato and prosecco sauce, her creamy no cream artichoke pasta, her coconut poached salmon and rice, her pineapple upside down cake, and her homemade peanut butter. But what else can you do to embrace the anti-diet movement? Here are my suggestions. First, eat when you're hungry and take note of how you're feeling so that you make sure that you're not eating for emotional reasons. Number two, stop considering foods as good foods or bad foods. Just do your best to get in as much nutrition as possible and then enjoy the foods that are on your foods that you love list. Number three, stop using things like food restriction and exercise as punishments. Instead, eat and exercise for fun. Number four, try different forms of exercise so that you can find what you enjoy the best. Maybe you enjoy swimming, biking, dancing. Of course, I suggest Qigong. In fact, you can check the description box in the podcast for a special gift from me to join one of my online Qigong classes for free. I'd love to have you and see how much you can enjoy this beautiful practice. Number five. We need to practice self-love. The motivational speaker and author Mel Robbins says that we should start every day by looking in the mirror, telling ourselves how beautiful we are, and giving ourselves a high five in the mirror. Number six, learn about what your body needs. Don't participate in a diet which is merely for restricting your calories. Instead, Build a plan of eating that accommodates your health condition and includes lots of nutrition to be used as medicine, but also a focus on the foods that you enjoy. Number seven, be conscious about all the negative media blasts that are out there. We hear so many messages that instead of reinforcing a positive body image, they make us feel bad about ourselves. Try to put a stop to this, whatever form you're getting them in, whether it's social media, the magazines you read, the television shows you watch, the people that you can communicate with. Be conscious about the media you consume. Number eight, be aware of the way that you speak to yourself. Sometimes the things that we say to ourselves about ourselves is so harsh We would never dream of speaking to someone else that way about their weight and their body image. Trying to establish a positive body image and a healthy relationship with food can be quite challenging. It's certainly not easy to suddenly change the way you think about yourself, your perspective, your behaviors, your thoughts. It's time for us to be kind to ourselves and have the patience and the acknowledgement, realizing that this process may take time. We should ask ourselves the same questions that Valerie asked herself. How can I nourish myself instead of just eating? How can I treat myself with care and compassion? How can I enjoy myself in the kitchen? Valerie says that these are all big leaps, which require us to take baby steps be gentle and forgiving with ourselves, be patient, and have the desire to grow and change. Valerie also says that in order to truly indulge, we have to stop waiting for joy to come to us. We need to get out of bed every morning with the intention to go out and find it and to indulge in what makes us happy so that we can truly enjoy this one great, beautiful life that we have been given. I am right there with you, my friends. Let's embrace the anti-diet movement together. Let's start feeling better about ourselves. Let's reach out and find the joy in every day and truly indulge in life and the gift of being alive. We can do this. 
we can and will reframe how we think about food and what we say to ourselves in the mirror. Please remember that you are not alone on this journey. I am here. I am accessible to you. And as always, I am wishing you well.